Hey guys, Bailey here from the Cloth Ever Podcast. Today we are going to do a little bit of video that I'm hopefully going to film over the next couple weeks. So I've decided to switch my detergent. I'm not super comfortable with Tide for a variety of reasons. If it works for you, it works for you. But this video is to show you how you might go through the processes of switching detergent and if there are any problems along the way, what you could do to remedy those problems. <laughs> uh, take along for the ride. We're gonna first hit up the grocery store, then we're gonna pick out a new detergent, we're gonna try it on the first load, and I'm gonna follow up in a couple weeks to see how my wash experience was going and if I experienced any hiccups and what I do when I uh, try a new detergent at home. This is, I've really wanted to switch from Tide as well. Even though it's been my trusty go-to for several years, I am ready to try something different. So I stopped into my health local health food store. This is what I found. I do. A couple people have suggested that maybe I clean my washing machine before switching. I am not going to do that today because I do clean my washing machine every month. So if you don't already clean your washing machine monthly, it really helps. So I'm going to walk you through how I'm going to do this because I, I really believe that it's pretty simple to switch detergents. We'll see if it comes out to be true or not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the first thing you need to do is put your diapers in the washing machine. So now that I have my diapers in the washing machine, the first thing we're going to do is a quick pre-wash to get all of the yucky poop and pee out. With Tide, I typically just did a small level. And with this one, I think I'm also just going to do one line. So, if, okay, so I added a super little bit of there. I added a line. I added one of the first lines, and this is like a super concentrated, so it didn't seem like a lot. We'll see what happens. I'll walk you through this part again. So I always choose just normal, with, and actually I usually turn it down to medium. Water plus for better agitation. Normal. This is a short little cycle. I find Water Plus really helps me because it adds a little bit more water. I don't really believe in a super stewy mix. I believe in a kind of a soupy mix gives a better wash, but that's just been my personal experience. So here we go. And we'll let it go. Alright. Hey guys, so I'm back. Diapers have gone through their pre-wash cycle, so that means most of the pee and poop is out of them. And we're going to now do the main wash. Now trying to figure out how much detergent you need for a main wash with a new detergent can be a little bit of a guessing game. And while there's a lot of advice out there on the internet, everybody out there on the internet is just making a best guess. So you can do it too. Honestly, if you come to me and you ask me for a wash routine, I'm just giving you a best guess because I don't know how your machine, your water, your diapers, how it all works. And if the diapers come out smelling, then tweak it. So we're gonna read the package. And I always use the full recommended amount for a heavy soiled load. So let's see. It says follow garment care, pre-treat, measure line two for medium loads and line three for heavily soiled or large loads. All right, so we got a heavily soiled load. We have this little measuring cap and we are gonna line to line three. All right, so until line three, which isn't a lot of detergent, so we'll see how this goes. Honestly, I don't think this is that large load, but it is heavily soiled. I have about half a load in here. I'll show you what it looks like and then we're gonna head out. Actually, we're gonna go brave the cold and go to Winterfest. So that's how full my load is. I just dumped the scoop in there. We're gonna close it. And then I'm not gonna mess with the good thing. I know what routine works for my house, but who knows? Maybe this detergent will will uh, be different. So we're washing on hot, medium spin, heavy, bright whites. It is worth noting that I did just turn down my um, hot water tank because I think my water was too hot. We're gonna start. Oh. There it goes. We're back from running around doing the winter festing and my diapers are done. I'm about to move them into the dryer. And what I'm gonna do is make sure that they're clean and that I think 
the wash has been successful. So honestly, I'm just gonna smell them. Yeah, so this isn't gonna be completely obvious and like your diapers might still smell clean and then come out of the dryer and smell, but this is a good first step because if they smell dirty here, then I know I can wash them without going through the process of drying them again. And honestly, they smell really clean. They don't actually, they smell clean in that there is no scent to them. So I feel like we did a good first wash and we'll see how this continues to work over the next couple weeks and if I have an issue. Typically, issues with detergent don't happen right away. They tend to be things that happen over time. And uh, yeah, sometimes it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like sometimes if, sometimes if a detergent gives you an issue maybe every six weeks, maybe just you tweak it then, it's not necessarily a terrible thing. Like I know when I use liquid detergents here in town, I would have to give my diapers an uh, extra rinse, maybe once every two weeks. And that was all it needed. Um, I know at one point when I was using Gain, I just had to give my... D d once when I was using Gain, I just had to give my diapers an extra rinse every second or third wash, and that would be all I needed to kick out the extra suds. Uh, usually, like on the third wash, you'd pick it up and they'd be still a little soapy and you'd be like, oh, that's weird. So you just throw another rinse in, no problem. Um, yeah, but it was like, if I did an extra, like an extra rinse every time was like too much work. But like on the second or third one, it would just kick out whatever I needed. And that's all I needed to keep that detergent working great. And it was easy. It sounds kind of complicated, but easy enough. I don't really believe in this idea of a perfect cloth diaper routine. I think that all cloth diaper routines are going to have some sort of ebb and flow with them. and They're never going to be perfect. They're going to be good. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to do this dryer thing. I'm actually going to turn you off because I'm trying to find a spot where I can put the camera in here. Sometimes when you're using a more natural detergent, you can get more staining because it doesn't have optical brighteners or whiteners in there. And I just wanted to show you this, which is probably TMI, but this is a Snap Easy menstrual pad and look, perfectly white. So this has done a really good job of removing stains from my diapers. I don't think I have any poopy diapers this time, so I can't really show you that, but that was a good example. And as always, I hang my covers to dry today. I'm just hanging them up. Hey guys, so it's the next day. I finally brought my laundry upstairs and I wanted to do one last thing. So as soon as your diapers are out of the dryer, this will be another good time to give it another smell test. They smell fine. So far, first wash, no problems. I don't have any smells or stinks in the wash cycle or in the dryer. So we're off to a good start. All right, I'll check in again in a couple weeks. I'm also gonna take the time this time to set up my stash the way that I wanna use it so I'm using the same diapers for the next month or so. That will be a bit of a challenge because my daughter is pretty opinionated about what she wants to wear on her bum. So we'll see how that goes. Hey guys, so update on the detergent situation. I'm noticing that my all-in-ones really stink like poop when she's peed in them. So they have a barnyard smell. And I know that sounds like, what uh, is barnyard smell? Basically, barnyard smell is when your diapers smell like a barnyard or how you think they might smell if it was a barnyard. So the all-in-ones are particularly stinky right now, which doesn't surprise me because all-in-ones are a little bit harder to wash. What I'm going to do to solve that is today when I wash my diapers, I'm going to try to use just a little bit more detergent. I do have kind of borderline hard water, and that's one way that you can kind of get your detergent to work better is just by adding a little bit more in the wash. That's typically what brands recommend when you reach out to them. So I think I will do probably line two in the pre-wash, and then I will do um, one cup and a little bit.
in the main wash and we'll see how that works. The diapers going into the wash today are not really duplicates from the last wash, so I don't feel like I need to fix anything. We're just gonna see if that kind of works to kick out the smell. Um, especially on that Thirsty's All One, that Nao just reeked the other day. I haven't had any problems with any of the prefolds or flats or inserts, just the um, All One diapers, so wish me luck. Yeah. So we're doing a little update on the seventh generation. It's been about a month now. It's March 5th or 6th. And so far, so good. I'm actually pretty impressed. I am having a bit of trouble with my all-in-one diapers, and I was struggling with them before I started, so I wonder if it's actually, like, just I should have stripped them because it's not fixing the problem. Like, sometimes I try, I always try to remedy the problem just by altering my wash routine, and if it's stubborn after a month, then it's really like, oh, I should just strip them. Um, it's not causing her a rash and it's only smelling after two or three hours So it's not something I'm like super concerned about. It's just something that's kind of like pesky um, So right now I've settled on using line one in my pre-wash and then <clears throat> Depending on how full my load is I'll actually do a, like a full cap line two, past line two full cap like overflowing in the main wash with a dash of OxyClean up there. I do have hard water and I think that that OxyClean was just what I kind of needed to kick out a little bit of the stink and get the detergent working the way it should. All right, time to take my hoodlums upstairs and we are going to go to the playground. Today I'm gonna to do my final update of the seventh generation wash routine. I've been doing this routine for about a month. This seems to be what has worked best for me. The day, I don't believe in obsessing about the perfect wash routine. What I do believe in is getting a wash routine that works for me and now in the moment. There is a good possibility that in three months I might have a stink problem and I need to remedy it. Right now, this seems to be working and I'm not going to get stressed out about trying to find something that works exactly perfect until I have a problem. And when I have a problem, then I will figure out what to do. And sometimes that means using more detergent, less detergent, extra rinses, and things. But basically, I just believe in kind of problem solving, experimenting along the way, using a little more here and a little more there. The one thing that I did learn about using seventh generation this month is that I've been having a really hard time getting denser materials clean, including Flats, prefolds, and um, covers are coming out really great and really clean. Just anything that is like four to seven layers of cotton is not. And I don't know, I'm gonna try stripping them. I'm gonna try experimenting a little more and I'll get back to you maybe in a couple months. But this seems to be working really well for my Nuggles inserts. Um, and it also seems to be working well for my Nuggles fitted diapers, even though I'm not really using the fitteds regularly. I did try to keep the same stash this month so that I wasn't mixing out a lot. So a lot, all these diapers have been being used for the last month. I usually end up with two bags of diapers in my wash. Today I have a bunch of new stuff that I'm prepping, prepping, a bunch of kitchen stuff that I'm prepping. Um, yeah. I did feel that a couple things didn't really come out super clean last time, but I'm going to just try to use a little bit more detergent. That's basically my strategy and like, you can do this, guys. So all I'm doing right now is, um, actually, I'm doing a big glug. I'm doing a big glug, line two almost, in my pre-wash. This seems to be working more effectively. It's not any line one. Keep in mind that I have moderate hard water. And what I want when I'm done my pre-wash is I really want to open it up and for the diapers to look clean. They're not going to be perfectly clean, but they want to kind of look clean. And then I want my second wash to be that wash that really scrub a dub dubs and gets them fully clean. So I'm going to run my first wash. I'll come back. 
I'll talk you through what I'm doing in my main wash that really kind of changed things for me and made sure that this works. And then that's it in the video. I love to know how you problem solve with your wash routine. Maybe what keeps you from problem solving? What worries you? Because you can do it and sometimes I feel like people are scared to. One bad wash isn't going to ruin your diapers. pre-wash cycle is done. Now we're going to do the main wash. Now one of the ways that I kind of preemptively catch any issues and one of the reasons that I'm now using almost line two in my pre-wash is just from the scent or the odor that I'm getting from this wash. And so when I, when I open it up, it looks fairly clean. And so now I know I just need to kind of do the main scrub-a-dub-dub -dub wash. Now, I was starting out this video using significantly less detergent, but um, my LG washing machine is quite large and I can wash about 25 to 30 diapers plus my kitchen laundry. So I could probably wash about 45 diapers in there, which is why I use a significantly larger scoop than maybe other people do. Depending on the size of your load really does kind of influence the detergent, at least in my experience. I've read other accounts suggesting the opposite, but that hasn't been what's worked for me. And this is really one of those things that like, hey, it's, if it works, it works, guys. So on the package, it did say to use line three or one ounce for the HE large loads um, and I just fill it to the top. Oh Walter! I fill it all the way to the top which is like a full line five. That's a lot of detergent. It's probably more in line with what Fluff Love <laughs> recommendations are. Oh. But this seems to be what's working best in my machine. Just for the sheer volume that I have. I fully could see why line 3 would work in other situations. Especially for regular laundry. But for my diapers, I really feel I need that full amount of detergent. Especially with this brand. I'm, it's just kind of what makes it clean. And sure, maybe a recommendation out there is for something completely different. But if it's not making your diapers clean, then try something else. <laughs> the other thing that I'm doing is actually adding a touch of Oxy. So I have this big box of Oxy from when I used Nellie's. And I found that just a little bit, like honestly, just a little smattering of it is all I really need to kind of get that extra funk out. Seriously. Walter, don't touch it. So just that little amount of it really took my wash from being eh, to kicking out that smell that I had. Don't ask me the science. I just know that a little bit of Oxy, I think it acts a little bit like a softener. I think it acts a little bit like a cleaner. I think it acts a little bit like a bleacher. I think it acts, I don't really know. Guys, I'm not a scientist. I'm not here to like give you wash routine advice. I'm just here to tell you what works for me and this is what's working is a little bit of this bad boy. I have this big old box. I mean, it's not entirely 100% perfect in getting my journey to go like chemical free or reduced chemical. Like Oxy still has some environmental impact. I'm sure of it because it's a bleach thing, but less is better. We're going to do a long hot wash on this bad boy. And we'll get going. The other thing that I've noticed has made a big difference is I upped my water temperature a little bit. Back in the beginning of the month I had turned it down a lot and now that I turned it back up and it's a little bit hotter, it's really, um, it's really making a difference at least with the plant-based detergent which has been feedback that I got from a few brands who were working with me on this issue. Sometimes you just need little twerks and little tweaks and they don't always have to be exactly what other people are doing. Experiment with what you got. See if it works. Think about what maybe you would do if you were washing regular clothes. Again, tweak, 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 tweak. It's not hard, guys. All right, so that was my um, my month. That's my routine now with seventh generation. Seems to be working fine. 
you know what? If I don't have a problem until six months and I strip those bad boys and I strip using Mighty Bubbles, so maybe they do get a smell in six months and I have to use Mighty Bubbles. I might still just keep doing the way I'm doing because stripping every six months using Mighty Bubbles is a really simple, easy, somewhat gentle process and a lot easier than nitpicking and getting finicky about what detergents and how I do it. Until next time, thanks for joining. I hope this had some sort of impact to you, some sort of help. Um, I understand that there's going to be people who really disagree with what I've said. Uh, when in doubt, reach out to a brand, reach out to a retailer for wash routine advice. Those women out there, they're ready, they're willing to help you and that's my number one source. Like, go to your brand, go to your retailer, get some help before you even think about thinking about what I say.